uh, thanks for the organizer to have invited me. Uh, we turn to the nice world of plants. Don't escape, it's only for 10 minutes. Uh, you will, so it's going to be rather technical, and it, you can consider it as an application note of what was just said before, because we have more or less the same uh, considerations. Uh, so why working on, on plants? Uh, I'm especially working on, on seeds. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a major issue uh, to understand uh, seed reserve accumulation for, for yield, the nutrition values, industrial values. And uh, we aim at gaining a, a better understanding of uh, limiting factor in seed reserve accumulations. Uh, this is a number of years of uh, Arabidopsis, uh, nine, day, nine days after pollination. Uh, Arabidopsis is our uh, species of, uh, of interest. Uh, it's a model species, which genome is uh, completely known and sequenced. It's our fly. Um, and uh, it, the seed is more or less half a millimeter, so the embryo is very small. Um, and uh, we know genes are specifically, specifically expressed uh, in the L1 layer, in the epidermis. We know expression of some genes vary, vary uh, depending on the genetic background. And we would like to make a transcriptomic analysis of the epidermis as compared to the cortex in blue, epidermis in red, in very small samples. Uh, there aren't so many techniques to perform such an analysis, so you may think about the intact system, which was published uh, uh, rather recently. So uh, technically, it's a GFP that tags the nuclei, and you purify the nuclei, either by fax or with uh, magnetic beads, but you need transgenic plants. Or you may think about uh, laser acetyl microdissection, which was our case, because uh, we have a platform uh, which is equipped with a Zeiss uh, microbeam, uh, the outline of the talk will be uh, roughly, uh, rapidly uh, some uh, optimizing of the cytology procedures, uh, RNA-seq procedures, and uh, we will present you today a, a kind of proof of concept uh, and limitation we, we got on uh, extremely low samples. Uh, so we are working on uh, silix. So silix is what you see in uh, rapeseed fields. It contains the seeds. Uh, this is more or less half a centimeter in length with uh, basic uh, acid-acidic uh, ethanol uh, fixation, acidic acid. Uh, it's embedded in, in, in paraffin. Uh, only an incubation step has been uh, slightly modified. We make uh, sections. And our main problem, and this for years, is the half, half time sorry, of, uh, of the slide. So after five to 10 minutes, uh, RNA are just degrading when the slide is rehydrated. So it really makes troubles. Uh, we use a uh, pen uh, slide, uh, uh, plastic covered, uh, an RNA uh, free room, uh, everything is standard. We try two kits for RNA extraction, and uh, we are using uh, now the Arcturus Picopure, which is the best in our hands for the best quality. Okay, uh, the quality uh, point. Um, so when you leave your slides uh, on a long time on the, on the microscope, your quality decreases, uh, which is rather normal. Uh, we indeed tried to perform a library for a relative low quality RNA, and we failed. So um, we turned to this uh, quality trouble and tested a few things. Uh, the quality according to microdissected surface. So to our great surprise, we have a very high variability with a low surface microdissected. We thought we would have increased the quality, and it stabilizes after, after a certain quantity. Uh, the quality stabilizes according to concentration. It's more or less the same, of course. The concentration increases according to surface. And uh, also RNA quantity increases according to surface, of course. But the main point is, Low surface, a low higher speed first, and low surface uh, produces less RNA. So we need to decrease the quantity needed for uh, RNA-seq experiments to increase the speed and to increase the, the sensitivity. So we have, uh, so our running conditions are more or less uh, uh, 40,000 uh, micrometers, square micrometers, uh, that produces uh, more or less 4, uh, 0.4 uh, nanogram total RNA. 
And with uh, those conditions, we got uh, nice uh, quality and we processed an experiment. So the, the thing is, we made one single macro dissection that produces more or less seven nanograms of total RNAs, and we performed the library with uh, five, one, point five, and point one nanogram of total input RNA with 18 amplification cycles, which is rather low for uh, plant uh, uh, cytology. We used uh, the smart uh, clone tech kit. Uh, I promise I have no contacts with the previous speaker. Uh, <laughs> Uh, which is the best in our hands, um, 18 cycles, and we have um, um, a specific step using a, a, a covaris that breaks the double-stranded DNA into fragments of more or less 250 to 300 base pairs that are highly suitable for Illumina sequencing. So it normalizes the sizes of uh, uh, double-stranded CDA fragments. Uh, for RNA-seq processing, we made uh, pair ends 100 uh, uh, sequence on an Illumina high-seq 2000, and we multiplexed the library by three. So we, we expect, I'm sorry, I have problems with the device, uh, we expect a coverage of uh, more or less uh, 60 million reads, which is more or less what we got uh, uh, here. So I don't have the 0.1 nanogram uh, results, so the library failed but uh, we do have the 0.1 nanogram uh, library, and we got a coverage of more or less 50 million reads, which is, which is nice. Uh, how many genes do we detect? So uh, in Arabidopsis, we uh, more or less have uh, 24,000 genes. Uh, we are in a developing organ, so we don't expect all the genes to be expressed, and we identify uh, uh, 16,000 genes more or less in uh, the 0.5 and 0.1 library a little bit less for the 0.5, and you will see uh, during the talk the 0.5 library is always a little bit uh, lower than the two others. Uh, how is uh, the number of genes found in one library compared to the other one? Uh, actually, you have 97% uh, of the gene detected with 5 nanograms, which are detected with 0.1, and vice versa, uh, which is uh, extremely nice. We were extremely happy with this result. Uh, do we have any BS? Uh, concerning the quantity of uh, read per, so the most express reads, actually. Uh, so when you make a cutoff of 0.5 uh, read per million, uh, you have more or less the same results, once again, for the 5 nanograms and 0.1 nanogram, a little bit less for 0.5 nanograms. Uh, so the detection of uh, identified genes uh, in the most express uh, reads are, are, is really nice as well. Uh, what about uh, quantification of expression? Uh, actually, when, when you make a person correlation on counts uh, between the 5 nanograms and the 0.1 nanogram and 0.5 nanogram, the correlation are, are, are good. Um, it, it, it's nice. And um, when you compare the same uh, comparison with the 5 nanograms to the other one with the genes which are the most expressed, the correlation is, once again, uh, very nice. So to this point, we were really uh, very confident, and we, we like very much to the experiment. So we can detect your genes, and apparently the quantification is nice. Um, when you plot the quantification, so you have here the uh, log expression of, for the library of 5 nanograms, and here for 0.1 uh, in blue or 0.5 in, in, uh, in red, uh, you see a, a strange thing. So for the 5, 0.5 nanogram, the distribution is okay. Uh, it's what you expect, more or less, for very for low quantity RNA. And for the blue one, you see this uh, strange curve with, which looks uh, a little bit uh, broken in, in, two, in two populations. Actually, we don't have uh, an explanation for this. And uh, we went a little bit further in, uh, in, in, in the analysis. And we made a plot a distribution of the reads on, on gene bodies. Gene bodies are, is a virtual gene, and you plot all the, 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 the reads on, on this virtual gene here. So you have the 5 prime of the gene and the 3 prime. So for 5 nanograms or 0.5 nanograms, you see nice distribution. The genes are completely covered. And for the 0.1 nanogram, you see this strange curve. Uh, so apparently, you have less read covering the f uh, five prime region of the gene when compared to the three prime region of the gene. 
once again, we have no explanation. The, the only thing I can say is with the library made for, with 0.1 nanograms, we had, when the, the data were computed, uh, an excess of uh, short sequences uh, with uh, poly-DT or poly-DA that were canceled by uh, bioinformatic treatments. So this may have an impact uh, on the curve, but uh, once again, uh, we are not fully sure of uh, the, the, the strength uh, of uh, quantification with uh, extremely low uh, libraries, or libraries made with extremely low quantities. So uh, what are the conclusions of uh, this work? Uh, actually, if your question is, I want to have a black and white answer of whether my gene is expressed in my very low quantity samples, uh, it works. Uh, you can claim or my genes is found uh, in my epidermis or not uh, with a relatively good provision and, and, uh, and without too many uh, errors. But if your question is really to quantify the ex relative expression of two genes in your sample, you need to be careful. And we think we need some more uh, replicates uh, to ensure the reproducibility of the quantification pipelines. And, and it's at, to test on the same line, uh, not biological replication, but more technical replication to check whether what we obtain with the 0.1 nanogram library is, technic is technical error or technical event, or if with a reproducible manner, we have this uh, five prime, three prime uh, mapping problems with uh, reads uh, among the genes. Um, we are currently micro-dissecting uh, epidermis from embryos uh, to answer our initial uh, question, and we'll be soon able to, to, to answer it, whether some genes are really uh, differentially expressed in the epidermis during uh, embryo maturation. And for plants, per perhaps it's, it's something rel relatively standard for uh, animal biology, but for plants, it, we have no mention in papers of uh, such uh, ultra-low quantification and uh, RNA-seq uh, approaches. And uh, it really opens the field of, of many things for plant sciences and especially for modeling, because people who want to model gene networks, they want to decrease and decrease the size of the samples to have more strength in, in the network, to build a network for embryo development with the full embryo is, is okay, but if you can discriminate regions of the embryo or sub-regions, it increases the power of uh, the approaches. And, and we have an, a demand to have uh, very low experiments uh, using these techniques. And finally, I would like to thank uh, the people on the two platforms uh, at uh, GPB, Versailles, and Eurogv Avery, uh, who made this work, uh, especially Kari Saka and Nero Borga, who made the macro dissection, and uh, Jennifer Yansouni and uh, uh, Céline Labrune and Céline Bazer who made uh, the libraries and the experiments. Uh, thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. The talk is open for discussion. Thank you. Um, I was a little bit surprised about your slides where you showed that after 10 minutes of microdissection you had a huge degradation problems and uh, when it was uh, under 10 minutes, you had not, because it sure is not an on-off process, but a kinetic process. So if you have after 10 minutes degradation, you should have also before degradation. And um, how do you uh, take care that this does not influence your gene expression? And shouldn't you then better optimize your procedure before that you do not have any degradation during the whole uh, laser microdissection process? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's a question we have for years, uh, even for RNA extraction for chip processing. We always had this. We had no real answer why. So lots of people have no problem of RNA degradation on the macro sector. We do have, have no specific explanation. We follow the procedure. We discuss with people in the animal fields. I don't know what happens. It may be specific for plant tissues. Um, our embedding, uh, we have speed up the processes, so I gave this 10 minute uh, window because uh, it's more or less what you need to, to draw your things. Sometimes we, are, we need just two or three minutes, but for sure if you leave your sample there for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you, you see this degradation, so 
of, of course, you're right. It's a, it's a decreasing curve. It's not black or white. But uh, once it's rehydrated, you have degradation troubles. I have no explanation why. Is that uh, degradation specific to your tissue sample, or is that, can that also, also be observed in pollen, for example? No, no, we, we have processed a lot of tissues, plant tissues, and it's always the same. It's not only for seeds or, or embryos. Uh, it's, always, it's also the case for, for, for roots. Or, uh, the, the only way we don't have degradation is to work with fresh tissues or um, um, cryosections. Um, but cryosection makes troubles if you want to really macro dissect very specific uh, region because you don't have the same nice quality you have with uh, embedded sections. So, so some tissue you don't detect them or, uh, poorly. Thanks. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm very curious. I mean, this have been for us two very interesting talks because we are looking into the possibility of entering the field. Uh, I, I just wonder, can you comment on something on your methods or how this compares, for example, with a single cell next gen sequencing, transcriptomic sequencing that Richard Sunbury is doing at Karolinska? I mean, he has been publishing protocols for a few years now and he's doing a little different library prep, as that's my understanding, but it seems to work very well. Um, you mean for sample preparation or for um, bioinformatic no, no, treatment? Yeah. Uh, with yeah. Plants have some specificity. So, sample preparation for plants is for sure different from human or animal cells. We have this cell wall, which makes a lot of troubles. It's hard to cut. We cannot process single cells. We are always working with uh, uh, organs. So, for preparation, we do have a lot of uh, differences. Even for uh, fixation, it probably takes much longer to work with plant tissues compared to uh, animal tissues because of the cell wall. So I don't trust too much comparison between uh, animals and plants for sample preparation. Once you get the RNA, I think we have a lot of to, to learn between uh, both worlds, animal and plants, because it's probably the same. And previous talk was on uh, animals, and we, have, we share more or less the same con conclusion for total RNA extraction, same kits. So probably have the same conclusions. But for sample preparation, I will be more cautious. Maybe also, an, thank you. Maybe also a general question for me. Uh, is the RNA's degradation process similar to animals? Or is it like exo, endo, nucleases, and, uh, and st no. stability? Uh, no, no idea. I have not checked. I have made no comparison between animal and plant uh, degrad RNA degradation. It's probably, you can probably find papers somewhere, but. Uh, we, we are processing only plants in, in our platform. We are platform, uh, plant, uh, plant platform specific. I mean, specific platform plants. Okay, thank you. If there are no further questions, thank you again for the talk. And